violinist Nick Kendall and his Time for Three bandmates started jamming together as students at Philadelphia's Curtis Institute of Music. Since then, the string trio has become famous for uniting classical and popular music in its recordings and concerts. John Mark Raffis speaks with Kendall about Time for Three's approach to making music. The violinist talks about the trio's desire to have fun on stage and with the audience while taking its music seriously. Kendall also hints at the songs the trio is likely to include in its Penn State concert debut. You guys like to uh, refer to yourselves as a classically trained garage band. What do you mean by that? The term really was something that we used to use, and we don't, we try not to use it too much these days, but it was more so because it, it's, it was a way to try to describe who we are. It's very difficult to describe what it is that we do in a live concert. You know, two violins and a double bass don't sound very exciting, but what we do is so much more than the, the mere instruments that we are holding and, and expressing ourselves through. It, it was a term that referred to the way that we put our music together, which which was very much a departure from how classical music is put together, where you had the composer sort of creating the work and then handing the work off to the musicians, and the musicians really don't have any conversations with the composer and then just playing the piece, whereas in Time for Three, it was literally the three of us coming up with ideas at the very beginning. It was Renan, our bass player, who had the the main ideas, whether thematic or or character-wise, and we get in the living room, not a garage, but a living room, and just sort of piecemeal it together, and we come up with our own arrangements. Now we actually do work with uh, several prominent composers who are completely willing to work with us and kind of break away from the traditional way of creating music, and, and we write almost together with them. We also work with arrangers and different producers and things like this. We're finding that there's a lot of people who really never listened to classical music that are becoming our fans who are now kind of having their perception of what classical musicians, who they are, kind of shed. And that's really exciting because, you know, some some of our mashups that we present, you know, we we mix up things like uh, Cry Me a River by Justin Timberlake and we put it together with the Adagio for Strings by Barber. um, And... A lot of people have heard of, obviously, Justin Timberlake, but they haven't heard of Adagio for strings, and they're wondering what that is. And Right. Or a lot of people have heard that in, in movie soundtracks, and they didn't know what it was, and they're like, oh, yeah, I know that piece. Right. And then they and then they get into another world. Basically, their perception of what classical music and classical musicians are is sort of torn down, and, and that's been exciting. You've probably heard this criticism. How do you respond to to people who say that, well, I'm not so sure about this, you know, is that dumbing down classical music? First of all, what we're doing is not necessarily classical music. We each continue to play classical music. I mean, I, 15 years ago, I started a chamber orchestra, a conductorless chamber orchestra that continues to play. We're called the East Coast Chamber Orchestra, otherwise known as ECHO. And I have a string quartet. Zach, the other violinist, continues as concertmaster of the Indianapolis Symphony Orchestra. And Renan, you know, he writes his own stuff, and he has these super famous double bass camps that have waiting lists to get into and to to teach the double bass. I mean, Time for Three is not a classical music group. We have our roots from classic training, but our output. It, the group is, is a conduit for us to have a great time with each other, to be in front of audiences that are, you know, are it's unexpected kind of concerts that we present. And the repertoire is different and new. Um, and it's very audi- audience friendly, but it also takes active listening to be at a concert. But we make that happen because the interaction while we're playing is so visceral and we are ourselves on stage between songs. We speak to the audience. We talk about a story that just happened or whatever. Um, But we're not a classical music group, and I think that's a mistake that people in the industry make. I know that you uh, that you don't uh, you know have your programs you know mapped out specifically in advance. You 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 know announce it from the stage. 
So you probably don't know exactly what you're going to be performing at Penn State, but in a typical concert, what sort of music could we expect to hear? Well, we're definitely going to play a few things off of our latest album. We're also going to do a couple of these, um, what we call mashups, which are blending or putting two distinct songs, one from the classical world and one from the pop world, together. Probably we'll do Firework by Katy Perry and Igor Stravinsky. We'll probably do uh, Little Lion Man, maybe some our gypsy repertoire, but it'll be a nice variety from from new, middle, and old of Time for Three's Rep. Do you find that uh, most of the people that you're drawing into your music are young, or do you find they're from a variety of ages? It's been a variety. That's been, I think, one of the cool things about walking out on stage is uh, is seeing who's actually coming to our concerts. And it's, as of late, it's been a lot of young kids who are starting to play an instrument and their parents and then their grandparents. Um, and you guys seem particularly active on social media. And it always seems like you're having a whole heck of a lot of fun. <laughs> it, you know, that's that's one of the things I think that, you know, as you said, you're not a, you know, strictly speaking, a classical group. But I think a lot of people have a sense of classical music or, or at least the instruments you play as being very formal and serious. But it seems like what you're doing is anything but serious. I mean, I think a lot of people, especially young people, think of serious as something negative. The way I always saw it serious was taking yourself seriously. So putting all of your effort and putting, you know, it, it's, a, it's a different kind of thing. It, it means actually celebrating and, and concentrating and, and with, through discipline and, and honoring your the many hundreds of thousands of hours of practice and sacrifice you put into your instrument, celebrating that with your colleagues. And it's done with a smile on your face, but with pure concentration and, and mustering everything that you love about playing music. But we're very serious when it comes to actually playing and sharing. But yes, we also have a way of enjoying the process and we also have a have a way of just enjoying each other. And I think we have discovered what social media does, it, again, breaking down the perception of what it is a violin and bass would do, but also it's the unexpected reactions that we get that are the most fun. So it's it's some of the little things that we don't even think about that are behind the scenes. People really love seeing you know, they love seeing what's under the hood of the car. And I actually think as a culture, and maybe I don't know this beyond the United States, but I feel like there's a big culture here in America that loves the behind the scenes sort of thing and loves looking at the process of getting to the final thing. And then they sort of understand the final thing. So uh, maybe that's nothing new. I, actually, I don't think it's new. But I think with social media and especially with groups that, are steeped in such discipline, so much, I mean, we've known this, that there's so much that we do or how we put things together that actually anybody can understand and relate to. You don't have to be a, a trained professional, classically trained artist or musician to, to understand the, the conversations or the moments that we go through when we're being, uh, being a group. Experience the music of Time for Three, February 26, 2015, at Penn State's Schwab Auditorium. For tickets or information, visit cpa.psu.edu or phone 800-ARTS-TIX.